first thing would be, and I've got some notes here, the first thing would be that it's an investment. Whenever you buy a home, you know, it is an investment, uh, especially if you buy a home that's not too expensive. You know, sometimes I find that young people, for instance, they want to buy, you know, the biggest out home that they can find, the, big, the, the most expensive home that they're approved for. Here we go. We have it on the screen. But the truth is that, you know, if you, you want to buy something that you're comfortable, that you're comfortable with the payments, and it doesn't matter if it's not very expensive because, you know, really and truly, you just need to get into a home. Get into a home because it is an investment um, because the home is going to appreciate. Uh, by that we mean that it's going to go up in value. Every year homes go up in value. Now it's not guaranteed, but traditionally they do go up in value, especially in Houston. So that means that if you buy a home right now, for instance, for $150,000, every year it's going to go up. And what happens is that then by, going in, by an increase in value, you are building equity. And equity means the difference between the value of the home and what you owe on the home. So if that home that you bought for 150, say five years later you owe 120, but now it's worth you know 180 thousand, you actually have what is, that would be 50 thousand in equity. So 50 thousand in savings. So it's actually when you buy a home, it's actually a forced savings. So if you're not good about saving money, buy a home because you're going to save money without even realizing it and without even feeling it. The other thing, of course, is that being a homeowner gives you freedom. Freedom to uh, paint your house however you want to, decorate however you want, um, you know, extend, you know, add, add to the home, update it, whatever. So it gives you a lot of freedom that you're not going to have in an apartment. The other thing is it's going to give you privacy, right? You can have your, you know, big wooden fence, you can have a pool, you have your children playing outside, barbecues, privacy that you're not going to have in an apartment. And lastly, the other thing is that it can give you rental income. You know, say you have a four-bedroom home. Uh, if you're a young person, you can always get roommates. Or let's just say that, you know, you had children. Your children have grown already. You can rent out some of the rooms. You can convert the garage. Or for whatever reason, if you need to move from your home, you can always rent it out and let someone else pay your mortgage. Okay? So I want you to think about that. Uh, because I want you to also think about one last thing, is that even if you're not buying a home, you are still paying a mortgage, but you're paying your landlord's mortgage. So buy a home. All right. OK. All right. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the rest of our show and introduce you to our guests. First of all, I want to uh, introduce you or welcome our co-host, Sonia Rivera. Hi. Good afternoon. Sonia, would you introduce us to our guest today? Absolutely. So I'm, it's my pleasure to introduce Jessica Garcia today. She is a yoga instructor. I've been following her work for a while, and I've been trying to jump into uh, yoga. But um, I kind of, I'm an observer first, so that I'm still observing, but I'm almost ready. So thank you for being here, Jessica. Yeah, thank you for having me and for sharing your great knowledge, Liz. I just thought of him myself, so. Oh, yay. <laughs> awesome, awesome. <laughs> it's always wonderful to have, um, you know, to own a home. So tell us, uh, Jessica, what is the name of your, um, the company, I guess it would be? Chandra is Yoga is the name. Okay. Chandra, what is Sorry, Chandra <laughs> means moon in Sanskrit. So. That was definitely your, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so that was definitely my first question. So what is it? It means what? Uh, moon. Chandra means moon. Yeah, so it's moon yoga if you want to say it all in English, but I've oh. always had an affinity for the moon. You know, it's a very strong pool on us, beautiful, and reflects the, the light from the sun, so I decided, you know, that would be a very nice name for my studio. How long have you been doing yoga? I've actually been practicing yoga for about 12 years now, awesome. teaching for eight years. Awesome. That and, is so cool. And now, we see some pictures here. Uh, that's is, is that you? Yeah, that's yeah, that's at Galveston Beach. Okay, tell us about this. Yeah, so recently we started doing um, yoga on the beach. So a totally different experience when you're out in nature. So you're able to feel the elements or the warmth from the sun. You're connecting with the earth and feeling the breeze. Just you know, run across the body. So really able, you're really able to be present and release any thoughts from you know your day and relax just enjoy the practice. Well, that must be awesome. You know, I've always thought of yoga as being very relaxing. Yeah. Uh, and so doing yoga and the beach, that <laughs> I'm sure that's very, very relaxing. Yes. Yes. Two in one. <laughs> yes. So, so tell us now, 
Like I said, I always think of yoga as relaxing or as stretching. Mm -hmm. Is that what yoga is for, for, for relaxing and stretching? So both of those things are benefits that you can receive from yoga. Um, there's lots of other benefits as well. So clarity of mind, um, just grounding yourself. A lot of us are just all over the place right now with work. So maybe you're in school, maybe you're a parent. So it helps us to just kind of bring in that energy and, and enables us to really focus on what we're doing at, at the time and at hand and just, yeah, be a better person overall. And I, it, it can also be used as a weight loss tool, is that correct? That is correct, yes. Um, so yoga does stretch out lots of your um, muscles, but we're also strengthening the muscles. So you're toning your body, um, which increases the metabolism and allows you to lose weight. For me personally, uh, it brought a lot more awareness into my life. So I was able to be more aware and conscious of what I was putting into my body. So in that way, I was also able to, to lose some weight myself. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of meditation lately, mm -hmm. but it's more with sound. And, and as I mentioned earlier, I love the sound of the beach. So it's more uh, listening to the sound of the waves or, or the sound of rain. But I've been watching your work, and, and I just it's just so fascinating. I really want to get into it. But And I never considered it as a weight loss tool. I just mm -hmm. always thought of it as a relaxation technique. But I can't wait to get started. But that, that does seem odd, you know, I think to, to most people, and certainly to myself, that you could actually lose weight with yoga. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you, I mean, really lose substantial amount of weight or just like a couple of inches? Or how does that work? Well, um, I think overall I've probably lost about 30 pounds since wow. I started. Oh, so wow. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. A few inches, yeah. a, few size, a few sizes, yeah. So it just depends on you know how much you're practicing, um, if you're actually taking yoga into your life. Um, for me, uh, yoga is um, a lifestyle. It's not just you know an hour of practice when you go into the room, but you take it with you throughout your day. And so if you really integrate all of the things that you learn in yoga um, into, your, into your life, then you're able to you know, b receive those benefits. And, and so one of those, like I was saying, is being more aware of what you're inputting into your body. But also when you're relaxed, you're not wanting to eat so much or eat the, the sweet things. or you know, So you're, you're more um, just grounded. And so a lot of us, we stress eat. So how does it help you to, I guess, to not be as stressed? Well, um, a lot of the times when we're stressed, we're rounding our shoulders forward, Oops. right? <laughs> 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 and so we're bringing in tension to our shoulders, our uh -huh. chest, um, even the upper back. And so with, with yoga, we're opening up those areas, releasing the tightness that gets you know, stored in the body. And so you feel more alive, you feel more energetic, you feel like sitting up straight, you know, so it definitely just brings that calmness over your mind and your body. Yeah. Well, and stress releases bad hormones into your body, doesn't That's it? Right. Doesn't that also create um, weight gain? That's right. To That's some extent. Very true, yeah. So you go into the fight or flight mode, yeah. which increases the cortisol. And so that's when your body holds on to the fat instead of using it for you know, your daily routines. And so once you bring in that calmness, that stress relief into your life, then yes, the cortisol will decrease and your body works more efficiently. Well, even with the meditation, like I mentioned, even with the meditation, I've noticed that things like uh, I tend to, they tend to just like slide off my shoulders a little easier. Every time something that's really stressful um, comes across, then I just remind myself, I'm like, just breathe. It's temporary. That's There's right. a solution. We got this. And so I, I think it's working great. So I can't wait to get started with you. So now is, um, is yoga like meditation? Or are they just similar or are they the same? Are they considered kind of like the same? Uh, well, meditation is part of yoga. So I think a lot of people um, in the Western world, we think yoga is just about stretching, but there's lots of different aspects to yoga. And one of them is meditation. So so tell me, what can someone expect? I mean, again, I've, I'll be honest with you, I've never done yoga. Yeah. <laughs> I've never done it, but I'm looking forward to it. Definitely going to do, mm -hmm. um, you know, go to one of your classes, but I want to do it. So. I mean, um, you know, I see people sitting, I see pe people, pictures of people stretch, stretching. What, what, what could I expect if I went to a yoga class? 
So it's a little bit of all of that. So we do sit for a little while, um, and we will just center ourselves. In my class, we start with pranayama. That's our breath work. So we'll just focus on lengthening the breath. Um, we do tend to be short breath or just use half of our lungs to breathe. So we, when we start our class, we'll just focus on deepening the breath and then move into postures. So more like a workout type, um, I guess, class, but not the same as you would do at a, a, a gym. Um, and then you also be doing some stretching, sometimes sitting, sometimes standing, some balancing poses. So to work on, you know, standing on one foot. Um, and then also at the very end, that's when it gets to the meditation portion of the class. So you have a little bit of, of all of that in my classes so that you can benefit from all of those different parts of yoga. Mm, okay. And um, now is yoga just for women? No. <laughs> um, there's lots of different um, theories as to where yoga started, uh -huh. but one of them is uh, about 5,000 years ago. It was uh, formed by a group of men, oh, four wow. men. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yes, and it was uh, meant to get them into the meditation state. And so uh, I would say, no, it's not just for women. It can be for kids. Uh, even for babies. So in my little girl who's 10 now as a baby, I would do little yoga poses with her, Aww. stretching out her body. You know? Oh, really? Yeah, and it's great for older people, too. I've had um, you know people in their 80s come to my class. I can totally modify the class for them, even if it's using a chair. Um, I've heard that it's used for PTSD. So you know anything, and for anybody that needs any stress relief, and of course all of us need that, right? <laughs> yes, wow, well, that's, that's, that's pretty incredible. So tell us a, a little bit about how you got started with yoga, first of all? Well, it was 2004, and a friend of mine was just raving about it. He loved all the benefits he was receiving from, the, from yoga, and finally I just decided to go into 24-hour fitness and try out a class, and I walked into a great one. Um, Sharon Hughes was the teacher, and after the class, I felt so relaxed like a new woman, you know, and I have just ever since then continued to follow her um, wherever she went. And so for me, you know, those benefits just continued to multiply. I dealt with anxiety and depression as a young child, I'm sorry, an adolescent and a young adult, and it helped me to get past all of that. So that was my introduction to it. I, I think that there is also a misconception about yoga. Um, I've, I have a lot of friends that are involved with like extreme boot camp or mm. um, uh, I forgot what the other one is called, but it's very uh, Cross. tough, uh, CrossFit and it's a very tough workout. And I think that people underestimate yoga. Do you find that as well? Yes, so a lot of times <laughs> um, when somebody hasn't ever done yoga and they come into class, um, they find that they're using muscles that they've never used before, <laughs> that they're sore in places they've never been sore before. Sure. So it's definitely a workout as well. Wow, that's, that, that's, that, that's amazing. Um, well, we are going to go ahead and take a uh, short commercial break, and then we will be right back. Okay. Thank you. Well, welcome back to Casa y Vida Houston show, and we are talking to Jessica Garcia. She is an uh, a yoga instructor. So where were we? We were talking about... Re yeah, yeah we were talking <laughs> about the comparison of a boot camp to uh, to yoga. I think that a lot of people underestimate the, the, uh, the, the muscular benefits of doing yoga because we tend to think boot camp, we got to run through tires or jump through tires and run miles and miles. And, and I've actually heard that yoga can actually create the same results. Is that true? Oh, that's interesting. Is it <laughs> is it true? And so it takes a little bit longer because we're not doing such an uh, extreme type of workout, but you definitely tone the body and your muscles do, um, you know, get a little bit more cut. Um, I was just saying on our break that a lot of people ask me about my arms and they say, oh, you're, you're very cut in your arms. And they say, do you work out? Do you do weights? And it's just all yoga. I don't lift weights or anything. So you can definitely get those benefits from yoga as well. Wow, I definitely think I'm interested in yoga. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, I think that a lot of us hesitate to work out because, you know, it's, it's tiresome, it's strenuous, it's, you know, just everything. And, 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 uh, 
and uh, you know lifting the, the heavy weights. And I think that even though we wanna, you know, we wanna get in shape, we you know we stay away from it for that reason. Mm -hmm. You know, so it sounds to me like you might be something we could, <laughs> we could actually do. I think learning to breathe too, because I know I I really dislike well I dislike exercise. But I think the the running like I've tried to run and but I think it's just not breathing correctly, and that's what a lot of people tell me that I just don't breathe correctly, and that's why I really. Um, wears me out the way it does. That's but it's so true. So yeah. a lot of runners will benefit if they do yoga, but it does help you to breathe more smoothly, more deeply, and so anything that you're doing in life, you know, requires you to breathe. So if you're <laughs> breathing with more efficiency, then you're going to be able to do more things. You're going to be able to climb upstairs easier, um, you know, be more calm in an interview, you know, situation. <laughs> so the breath is very important as well. Um, and so, you know, if you talk about the whole integration of yoga, then you're, you're not only talking about, you know, using your breath and, and strengthening your body, but also clearing your mind. Sure. So, yeah, so many benefits. Um, I think I've seen that you do it in several different locations, right? So the one that I got really excited about was the yoga on the beach, but you do other really interesting uh, locations, right? Yes, yeah, so r currently um, my studio is run out of an art gallery, and that's over near U of H downtown in the District Art Gallery. So they're very, um, it's, a, it's a wonderful gallery, and so they're very nice to have us in there, host us every Monday evening and Saturday morning. Um, but I also teach downtown at the Tellipson YMCA, the Downtown Center Club, um, which is connected with the Metropolitan Club. And I just recently started some classes over at the um, Sabine Street Studios, which is part of the Sawyer Yards uh -huh. Art District in Washington area. So, yeah. so you do some really artsy stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I think also you mentioned earlier that it can be used for babies as well as uh, older people. And so for an older person, what would the benefits be? Because I know like your bones start to get a little tight. Um, right. So tell me a little bit more about that benefit. Yeah, so anytime you do like a weight-bearing um, exercise, uh, you're strengthening your bones. You're increasing the density of your bones. And so when we do any type of um, posture where we're putting weight on our hands, our knees, our feet, then you're working on that weight-bearing um, exercise. But balance is also super important. As you get older, you tend to um, lose some of that balance because the equilibrium begins to get a little bit off. Sure. And so practicing that in yoga helps for um, when you, you know, continue to, to lose that balance, it helps you to bring that in. So. Yeah, a lot of people have the tendency to live more of a sedentary lifestyle. That's true. You know, the other thing is that, you know, we were talking about comparing it sort of to like um, other other activities like um, weightlifting, et cetera. Um, I would imagine that it's not maybe also not as easy as I, I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> in other words, I mean, uh, I mean, in other words, I, I, again, we think of it as, we, I think of yoga as just for relaxing, so I think I'm just going to go and just relax, and, <laughs> and, and, and I'm not going to have any pain at all whatsoever like I do when I, do, when I work out. Is that correct, or am I incorrect? And, no, and you will definitely be a little sore the first few times, um, and depending on how often you go uh, will depend on how long you'll be sore, but you will build up your muscles and eventually feel more relaxed and stretched out versus um, that soreness. But I wanted to bring in also something because we talked about you know doing yoga as we get older. Yoga is an exercise that you can do your entire life. So it's more sustaining than say your CrossFit or something more strenuous because as, you, as we get older, those things become too harsh for the body. But yoga can always be tailored to every age group. Well, awesome. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jessica. Thank you so much for the information. We really appreciate it. And um, we definitely look forward to having you on again. And thank, thank you so you. much for the information. And where can someone get a hold of you if, they want, if they're interested in your class? Yeah, Chandra Yoga, the number four, life.com is my website. I'm also on Facebook at Chandra Yoga. And on Instagram, Chandra Yoga for Life. Okay, that's awesome. So now you know you guys can get a hold of her. Or, of course, you know, feel free to... Um, write a message you know in our in our comment section and uh, we will make sure that she gets your message all right well, thank again, you Jessica thank, thank you. you and Appreciate we will be right that. back after a short commercial break all right so um, welcome back to Casa Vida Houston and uh, we just uh, finished talking to Jessica um, Garcia 
with was it Chandra? Was it Chandra, Chandra Yoga? Chandra Yoga, and you know, very interesting information. I highly encourage that you guys, uh, you know, get you know get a hold of her. Uh, put some messages uh, below um, if you want to get a hold of her. Also, I do want to ask you to make sure that you share the link to our video. Um, share it to your page. Also, share it to any other pages or any other groups. So, if you belong to any buy and sell groups, if you belong to business groups, you know, any kind of group, empresarios, whatever you have, share it in there so that we can get more viewership. Uh, it is very important to us. We really do appreciate it. Also, if you could make uh, comments, we want uh, our, our video, of course, to get more views. And the way that we're able to do that is if you, uh, you uh, include comments. So don't just like it. We want little hearts. We, want little, we also want little, little hearts, little smileys, <laughs> any kind of emojis, and definitely comments, okay? And then, of course, we'll always get to your comments right afterwards. So let's see if we're ready. Um, yeah, I think we're having a little problems with the camera. So, um, so we're getting ready to get the camera for the guests. They'll let us know when they're ready. But meantime, so, Sonia, what's going on? Tell us. Is that one? We're ready? <laughs> ah, okay, we are ready. All right, so this is, um, uh, well, I want to introduce you to our guest. Uh, Sonia, will you introduce us to our guest? Sure, absolutely. So Viri Maldonado is a very dear friend and a lover to death. Uh, so I'm very pleased to introduce Viri Maldonado here, and she's here to discuss blogging. I follow her blog on social media often, and she's always going to these really amazing places and just has such a really cool perspective. So, Vidi, thank you for being here today. No, thank you for the invitation. Um, I'm really excited to be here with you guys, so thank you. Well, welcome. I mean, I, I tell you what, I'm really excited to have you because, like anybody else, I've thought of having a blog forever, ever since blogging, you know, people started doing blogging, but I've never done it. I mean, I'm first of all, I'm, I'm sure it's a lot of work. Uh, I think it's fascinating. Yes. Uh, but I'm sure it's a lot of work, and so I'm excited to have you here. And, and I think that I'm sure that there are a lot of people out there that would probably be interested in also, in it also. So if you would tell us, tell us about your blog for those of us that don't have never, you know, for those people who have never seen your blog. Oh, what, and what's the name of the blog? What's the name of the blog? <laughs> the name of the blog is The World According to VD. Um, a lot of people are like, why did you name it that? And the reason I named it The World According to VD is because I wanted, um, everybody has their own point of view of different topics in life and, and the world. So that's why it's called The World According to VD. But um, it basically started when I was in college um, a couple of years ago and it was a homework assignment and it kind of opened up um, an idea that I wanted to have a little space in the internet world um, to call my own that it had my own ideas my own perspective of life um, and so a way that I could also communicate and share um, things that that I do um, traveling and just lifestyle period so my blog is based on lifestyle um, and travel um, I, I love to share things about Houston on there as well, um, just like uh, my favorite restaurants, um, things to do, festivals, um, but yeah, that's, that's mainly what, what my blog is about. And she and she's underestimating her. Uh, well, she's underreporting because I have to say I live vicariously through VD's travels. So she's usually in Florida, in Europe. Um, she's she's a really amazing um, young woman, and and I just love following her travels and and her perspective. She's got a very fresh perspective, very positive and uplifting. So I love um, following her blog. Um, Vidi, why don't you tell us, so is this blog on, on so is it social media based or is it, do you create your blog on a different site and then transfer it over to social media? Yes, so my blog is was uh, hosted by WordPress, but I recently, um, I just created my own uh, website. So um, it is based on WordPress, but uh, I've kind of did some different, um, there's only so much you can do on WordPress, especially when it's free. <laughs> um, so now I hired somebody to do the, the whole website, how I wanted it uh, to look. Um, and then I do end up sharing some stuff on social media. So for anybody that's interested in starting their own blog, I would suggest you start on WordPress, um, just because there is a community already built on WordPress that will find the same interests that you might have and they'll follow you and then you can follow them and you start to create your own fan, fan base on, um, on that platform. And then you could just start, um, you know, 
sharing your thoughts and ideas on social media. You guys don't understand the power of social media. I've gotten so many opportunities thanks to social media um, and, and that has led to helping me on my blog. Um, you know, having a blog is very time consuming. I will say that and I'm not the best example, <laughs> you know, to, to keep up with it because, you know, I do have a full time job and I, I am involved in different organizations in Houston. So I'm very, you know, busy, maybe like the most of us. Um, but I would suggest having a calendar and, and going off of that calendar and, and just making sure you stay on top of your game because it's very easy to fall off. So what inspires you, Vidi? Because I, again, I follow you regularly. So what is it that inspires you? Because again, you, you always have such a fresh perspective on things. And so what are the things that really, really inspire you? The things that inspire me are my culture. Um, uh, my parents are Mexican and I was born here in Houston. So obviously, you know, everything Houston, food, um, my Mexican culture, and of course, traveling, um, you know, I, those are just things that, that inspire me. And, and I wish I was a travel blogger and I like go <laughs> backpacking, you know, around the world. But, um, but yeah, those are, are the daily main things that, that inspire me. And tell us about your traveling. I hear a lot of traveling. So what, what kind of traveling do you do? Um, and how often? So actually, without even planning it, <laughs> I have been um, doing a trip ever since the beginning of the year. So once, a, uh, once each month since the beginning of 2018, I've been on a trip. Oh, wow. Um, I'm so, so jealous. Yeah. <laughs> like, jealous. But let me tell you, it did not happen. Like, I did not <laughs> plan it. It was just something that happened. And now I'm trying to keep up and see if I can go on trips till the end of the year. Um, so, like, where have you gone? Have um, you so let's see. At the beginning of the year, I did a really cool trip to... Um, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. From there, we did um, a two-hour road trip to this place called Carelles that I actually discovered on social media. And Carelles is one of those hidden treasures in Mexico that rarely anybody goes to. And if you guys ever have a chance to plan a trip, that is one of the trips that I definitely like will remember forever because we got to go to a turtle sanctuary uh -huh. and actually release. Um, it, it was about 80 turtles that day, and it was just a really cool experience. You know, sometimes you don't really um, want that the whole um, the typical touristy you know stuff. You want things that you'll always remember, and sometimes it doesn't even cost a lot to to take trips like like this. So. Oh, where else have you gone? Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, of course, New York, Chicago, um, Europe. I've been to London, Paris, Belgium, Germany. Wow. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so on my list next um, is to, to go to Asia. So I would love to travel to Asia. Wow. That is amazing. I thought she was going to say San Antonio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just within Texas. That is just amazing. Now, do you do this with, uh, do you have a certain group that you travel with? I do. Um, shout out to my friends. <laughs> yes. Yes. Shout out to your friends. Who are your friends you travel with? Yeah. So it's a, a, a close group um, that I travel with. Um, usually we try to do a big uh, trip once a year uh, just with mm -hmm. them. But in, but individually, I travel with myself or with my brother. Um, so, yeah. It's just a little bit of, of everyone that, and, that lo loves to travel, too. And you spent an entire month in Europe not too long ago, right? Or a few years ago? Yes, a couple of years ago, I spent an entire month in Europe and that was just an opportunity that, that you know, came across. Um, I have a friend that's from Germany and thanks to her, I was able to spend it um, at her place and we got to do a lot of traveling together. So it's, it's nice to have friends in different places. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. That is, that, is, that is pretty, pretty awesome. And so you share all this information, your experiences on your blog. Yes, of course. So I'll share anything that has to do with finding a great uh, ticket online um, to things to do in certain countries um, and just tips because sometimes, you know, you have more fun when it's with the locals 
then you know when you google stuff and and it pops up as the top 10 tourist things to do in germany per se um but when you're with the local you see a different side of places than if you were to just go off of what you find online yeah so do you search for other uh, bloggers when you're at these destinations sometimes um i do i do my research and i like to see what other blogger bloggers have done in that specific area um, but you know it's just nice to see what other people around the world um, also are doing in the blogging industry and so you're a little bit of a foodie because your dad owns a restaurant right yes so yes, you're very yes, involved yes. in the restaurant business my family um, even my my dad's cousins um, own restaurants here in Houston and my dad owns restaurants and yes I'm I ever since I was little I grew up with it so I, I've seen his him as a businessman ever since I was little and yes me and him me and my dad share a special connection with food and <laughs> it sucks now because my dad got ill uh, recently so he can't have a lot of this food anymore <laughs> um, but but yes um, I am a big-time foodie I love food and I I love to travel and try the food from places I, I travel to. So, and was journalism your um, major in college? Yes, journalism was my major in college. I went to U of H, go Cougs. Yay, go Cougs. <laughs> um, and so I graduated with a master, I mean, with a bachelor's in journalism and a minor in global business and Spanish. Um, my idea was that I wanted to become the first Hispanic Oprah. Oh, it right. might happen. We <laughs> don't never know. know. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, that's what I studied. And so that's kind of what led also to my passion um, to to blog because I do have a journalist passion inside of me ever since I was young I always knew that that's the career that I wanted to take and study and do um, when I got older and I don't regret it um, at all so anybody that's wanting to study journalism I think you should also start um, writing um, in, in perfecting those writing skills um, with the blog and, but do you have to be a journalist to be a blogger? You don't. Um, you really can see a lot of people jumping on the, the blogging uh, bandwagon. Um, I think there's a lot of mommy bloggers right now. Yeah. There's a lot of even male uh, blogging that, that, you know, fathers that are trying to express also their side of blogging um, and having a family. Um, so you don't have to be a uh, journalism or media related um, field in order to start your blogging. I think everybody has something to say and, and the internet is just there for you to say it. So I kind of have a selfish question. If I don't want to take the time to go to WordPress and create my own blog, but I do have a passion for sharing my thoughts and ideas, mm -hmm. Is it okay to just do it on Facebook or or LinkedIn? Uh, not LinkedIn, but um, Facebook and Instagram. Or what do you? What are your thoughts on that? Um, I think everything. You have to separate everything. Um, it's good to start doing your thoughts on Facebook per se. Um, just positive. Because, yes, positive thoughts. <laughs> yes, that's where I was going to, because um, you do create this kind of fan base on on your Facebook and social media. You know, there's people that regardless if they're your friends, they're gonna be your biggest advocates when you do become, you know, bigger in your blogging um, world. But um, I do, I would say keep it professional because, sure. you know, for others that um, are looking to maybe get hired in a different job, jobs are looking at whatever it is you're posting. So just keep it professional, make sure you know what it is that you're posting and where you're posting it. Good point. Hold that thought right now. <laughs> We're gonna go to a commercial break and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Casa y Mida Houston, and we are talking to Vidi Maldonado. She is a Houston Latina blogger. Her blog is The World According to Vidi. And before we went on commercial break, we were talking about uh, basically some tips. She was giving us some tips for people who want to become bloggers and about social media. So, so can you kind of elaborate a little bit more about that? Vidi? Yes. So what I was saying was basically um, you can start writing on Facebook and your social media, but you just have to make sure that it's a positive message that it 
everything you write it goes back to the image that you want to portray to others so um, blogging is not ranting so I wouldn't say you know rant on social media um, because that's that's a personal thought and I don't think you know that's something that needs to be shared on social media because it does go back and portray who you are and, and how people see you so if anything I think that people need to start spreading um, positive things and maybe tips on on you know how to live a better life how to be happy how to um, you know find a, a better job um, just something that will help others because everything that you write you always have to remember who is going to read this how are people going to portray this how are they going to get it and how are they going to use it in their lives right so make sure that your information is always positive and it's always something that others can use and share yeah and let me ask you this how do people get found I guess that's one of the things that I've always wondered I'm like I said I've always had an interest in a blog uh, just because I like to you just I don't know I think I have an interest in, in marketing communication somehow I've always had this, this sort of interest but um, how do people find you I mean do people still go to websites and work with websites we're all into social media yeah. we're all thinking Facebook Instagram so how do people find you if you have a blog so I'm still trying to figure that one out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, social media plays a big part of, of blogging. So whenever you uh, use social media, I would suggest you, you, you post once a day, every day on social media, especially on Instagram, um, and use specific hashtags that are to your niche. So that's exactly how you would get find um, found. So there is people that messaged me on Instagram saying, hey, I found you here um, and now I, I read your blog. Um, or there's people that just Google certain um, words on uh, on Google and your stuff pops up so it just depends there's you know there's different things that people can really um, um, find you different ways um, one of the biggest blogs that that really got out was there was a blog that I wrote a couple of years ago that was like 10 things um, to buy for Christmas under 50 or 25 dollars I can't remember specifically and you wouldn't imagine the messages that I would get from like different places like um, India Argentina wow. yeah and <laughs> so I was like okay I know that that's something that I need to continue to do the following years because that's something of interest so it's just different ways and you have an event coming up, right? You're part of an organization. Can you tell us a little bit about that real quick? Yes, I'm part of an organization called Houston Association for Hispanic Media Professionals. It's an organization I've been involved with for over 11 years, ever since I graduated high school. And it's an organization that saw me as a student um, and now as a professional, and I'm actually now part of the board. And it's an organization that um, is very dear to my heart because it's, it's helped me so many ways. I've found some of my great Mentor, mentors uh, through this organization and so we have a gala next Friday that helps raise money to uh, give scholarships to upcoming journalism and PR media students um, so if anybody's interested in supporting um, please visit hahmp.org they have tickets on there on uh, on sale now um, it is filling up fast so anybody that wants to support um, we are there um, most of the media here in Houston is involved with this gala and our organization, so please come out. It's really, it's a really fun event, and I know Sonia, you've been to some of our events yeah. before, so I know you can really back us up and say that this is one, <laughs> uh, one fun gala. Yeah, to go they to. had the Cirque du Soleil uh, theme one year, and it was really amazing. I mean, you guys just knocked it out of the park. It was a fun gala. Yes, thank you. And so this year, it's the theme is Enchanted by the Sea, um, and we just got confirmation on our our. Um, keynote speaker we haven't announced it yet on our facebook page but should i give you guys it's a always a surprise Yay. so yes <laughs> um so our keynote speaker is actually univision talent that i've been really happy to work alongside with his name is yomari goiso and he is on despierta america primer impacto gordo y flaca and so he is doing us the honor to come as our keynote speaker awesome oh, that's awesome yay so tell us also um now you're blogging that's not your career is that your it's that's not, what you not do my for career a no <laughs> what do you do for a living do you also have a, a job i do have a full-time job <laughs> that, that um 
my job um, is basically a PR. Uh, I'm a PR specialist, um, account executive for Lopez Marketing PR um, PR Group, and basically some of the accounts that I handle here in Houston is Ford, um, which is a really big account, uh, Ford Motor Company. Great people. Um, They're great supporters of the community. Yes, thank you. And um, also Galveston Bay, uh, Mama Licha. Um, and so we also had other clients that um, maybe a lot of, of the people in the community might know, like Farouk Systems. So, um, yeah, it, that's my full-time job, and I'm, I'm really happy. I love what I do um, because it's a little bit of helping the community, but also it has my media um, world both connected in one. Well, that's awesome. You know, I think that a lot of times people think that, you know, you can't do anything with a journalism degree. Is it the, the journalism or communications? Uh, well, I, I, mine was journalism. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so sometimes, oftentimes people think that with journalism, especially, you know, they think that, you know, journalism is dead, uh, you know, because they think newspapers are dead and, and they think you can't do anything. You seem to be doing very well with your, yes. you know, with what you're doing. But I yes. think also with journalism, it's also writing. I mean, there's so many writing skills are so necessary in everyday world. I mean, writing contracts, writing bios, writing, I mean, proposals. there's, yeah, proposals. I mean, I, I've been working on proposals for the last couple of days and I surely wish that I didn't have to work so hard at it as a, I'm sure, actually, I think I'm going to send them your way, BD, so you can polish <laughs> them up for me. But yeah, I mean, just learning writing skills. I, I, I know that print media seems to be dead, but I would, do you agree or what are your thoughts on that, BD? Um, yes and no. There is still that generation that loves to have things in their hands. Um, but I do feel that everything's going digital. So if you do have a magazine or newspaper out there, please go digital because that's <laughs> where we're heading. What about writing for, but writing is still important even though it's digital, correct? Of course. I mean, I mean that's, those are basic skills that you need every day in your life, right? Sure. I mean, even for a good job, you have to have great writing skills. Um, so yes, um, yeah, writing skills in and out the job, I think counts. So what are your plans? Tell us, you know, uh, you know, what are your major, what are your future plans or goals? Uh, my future goals, you know, I like, I have a dilemma because <laughs> I love to do a lot. Um, I love helping the community. I love the media. Um, but um, I do see myself as a business owner. So I'm still, you know, practicing and you know, getting those skills to become a really good business owner one day. But yeah, that that's basically what I want to do. I want to give back to my community. I want to still work in the media world. Um, I, I Ideally, I would probably like to find something that I could combine traveling with work. Um, so we'll see what happens. And you've thought of having your own show? Your own? Yeah, I have. I've thought <laughs> about it, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, you know, it, it's all about timing, so we'll just see how, how that goes. Well, that sounds wonderful. Any, any, any last tips that you want to give to anyone that's, that's you know, starting, wanting to start a blog? Or? If um, you're wanting to start a blog, I would recommend getting involved um, in different organizations. A shout out to Houston Latina bloggers that I'm also a member of. Um, just get involved in different organizations. Start building your own, you know, fan base because those are the people that are going to push you. Um, and don't be afraid. Just, you know, just do it. That's all you have to do. You just know, just jump in. Just jump into it. Um, somebody will read you. I promise. Even if it's your mom or dad, somebody will read you. <laughs> um, so just do it. You know. Um, but but thank you. If you guys need anything else, um, my social media handle for Instagram is at virimal. That's V I R I M A L. And you could just message me. I usually respond to everybody on there. Okay, and they can find you on Facebook also. Yes, also under virimal. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Vidi. You already know you're one of my favorite people in the whole world. I just think thank that you. you're such an amazing um, young woman and, and vibrant and positive, and, and you really do do a lot for the community. So thank you again so much for being here. Yes, thank absolutely. you, ladies. Thank you so much. Yeah, and thank, thank you. So you. Much. And thank you, um, you know, Sonia, for recommending her. <laughs> you know, really, really appreciate it. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, guys. Well, this is, you know, um, you know, just want to remind you that, you know, we are with you every Thursday at 1 p.m. And, uh, you know, we'll see who we bring next week. I'm sure it's going to be another interesting guest. 
and I just want to um, just you know thank you so much for uh, for watching us make sure that you share our video for anyone that hasn't watched it and of course the video will be recorded so you can come back if you missed anything and watch the whole show again I'm Elizabeth Miranda with Miranda Properties, and if you're looking to buy a home, make sure that you uh, look me up, give me a phone call. My number is 832-878-1255, and of course, you can also always find Sonia Rivera uh, online. Sonia, you want to give us your contact uh, number? Uh, my website is uh, soniarivera.us, or you can find me on social media, Facebook, Sonia Rivera, Sonia Rivera US on Twitter, LinkedIn. Pretty much Sonia Rivera, US. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for thank joining you. us today. Bye-bye.